Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Justin Milner. I'm the Executive Vice President for Evidence and Evaluation here at Arnold Ventures. And we're absolutely thrilled to have all of you join us today for this webinar. We know that you have many competing demands on your time and, and thrilled that you've chosen to spend this bit with us. Uh, I will say at the start, it is acceptable uh, to check your phones and other web pages during this webinar, but we're going to do our best to hold your attention as much as possible. I can't see uh, all of the, the wonderful people on this call, but, but really, we're truly thrilled to have you. Um, we will spend the next 45 minutes doing a few things. We are going to give an introduction to Arnold Ventures, quick overview uh, about both the organization and our team. We're going to go into great depth about these RFPs, requests for proposals that we have launched recently. We're going to offer up some practical advice for applying, and then we're going to have plenty of time for question and answer at the back end. The goal for you coming out of this 45 minutes is to have a better sense of what these RFPs are all about and how your work might align to better understand what we're looking for in strong applications, and then have real clarity on what next steps would look like. Um, as I said, we're gonna have plenty of time for question and answer in the back end. Here's how that's gonna work. You see the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. All, all participants are muted for the duration of the presentation, but please feel free to submit any questions you have in that button below. We're gonna be tracking that in real time and we'll have uh, should have up up to 20 minutes on the back end to answer those questions. Um, if you have questions about your specific project idea, now is probably not the best time. But we're going to have some contact information included on the back end, so you will be able to get in touch with us uh, on any specifics. Also, want you to know that this webinar is being recorded. So if you watch the whole thing and you want to watch it again because you're that kind of person or you want to share it with people on your team, you will have that, that opportunity. We'll be sending out that recording in the next few days. Great. So what is, what is Arnold Ventures? Who, who are we? Arnold Ventures is a philanthropy that is truly committed to research and evidence and using research and evidence to drive policy solutions that maximize opportunity and minimize injustice. We work on a wide range of policy areas, including criminal justice, healthcare, higher education, public finance, infrastructure, contraceptive care and access, and even more. Our team is called the Evidence and Evaluation Team. And our work is really centered around a two goals. One is to invest in rigorous research to build the body of evidence around what works, and two, to think about how do we advance the use of data, research, and evidence in policymaking. And we think about uh, how we do that and support organizations to do that at the federal, state, and local levels. Our team is small but mighty. This is the four of us. Um, so Justin, Samantha, Shrutika, and Leah, comprise our team. We, uh, except myself, bunch of rock stars. You'll hear from Samantha and Shrutika later, uh, later as we work through this. Um, we are excited today because we are sharing uh, about the launch of two new RFPs. And so hopefully you've heard about that. One is called Building Evidence, and it's focused on causal, causal studies to evaluate social programs and policies. And we'll talk about some of the domains that we're focusing on. And second is around strengthening evidence. And that will be uh, focused on support for randomized controlled trials to evaluate social programs and policies. We're going to be going into greater depth on both of these shortly. We're excited about these two RFPs for several reasons. One is that, as I said, Arnold Ventures is deeply committed to investing in strong causal research to better illuminate what might be some of the uh, solutions to the most pressing problems that we have in our country. Um, 
Second, we're really excited about these as doorways, as entrees for um, new researchers and expanding the community of researchers with whom Arnold has worked in the past and specifically thinking about early career researchers and researchers from diverse backgrounds. And third, we're excited about this, these two RFPs because they're really focused on policy relevance. We're very much interested in supporting research that can directly influence and support policy making at multiple levels of government and really thinking about not just investing in research for research sake, but investing in research that can truly inform the decisions that policymakers and decision makers broadly defined have to make in the real world. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Samantha. Um, as a reminder, as we get into the details of these RFPs, if you do have questions, please leave them using the Q&A button below. And um, want you to know that we are, uh, we'll be excited to answer as many questions as possible during this time, but we'll also create um, places to connect with us after this webinar and going forward. So I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Samantha. Take it away. Thanks, Justin. Um, yeah, and thank you so much again for sharing your time with us today. We're so excited to share this with you and so excited to see so many of you willing to learn about and talk about research. We're, we're thrilled to have you all here. Um, and so now that you know a bit about why we're so excited about these RPs, we do just want to go into a bit more of the nitty gritty details on what will make a project a really strong fit for these RFPs. And just to start up top, we just want to make sure you all really understand and know that, as you know, for our team in the past, rigor remains our North Star with both of these RFPs, and a rigorous causal study remains our top priority. And the reason we focus so heavily on rigor and causality is because we really want to build and help grow the knowledge base with the greatest amount of confidence possible for the kids and the families and the communities we care about. And so we really believe that strong causal studies are the best way to use the limited time and resources and energy that we have to find out and notify really policymakers about what is most effective to impact positive change. And so with this building evidence RFP, this is our RFP focusing primarily and exclusively on quasi-experimental designs. And this is really exciting for us. And we're really thrilled to sort of widen the aperture here um, and bring in quasi-experimental work into our portfolio of work. And so first we'll go through this building evidence RFP, and then we'll talk a bit about the strengthening evidence RFP and go through sort of similarities, differences, and selection criteria for the two. And so for us, when we're talking about quasi-experimental designs, we're most excited about studies using difference and differences designs, regression discontinuity, or instrumental variable designs. And as Justin mentioned at the top, AV has some really key, key policy areas that we focus on. And for this building evidence RFP, we do ask that proposals that come in the door, LOIs that come in the door, they really focus in on and are aligned with key policy areas within um, Arnold Ventures. So these are outlined in the RFP, but just at a high level. This includes higher education, which they pro focus primarily on programs promoting student success and measuring those student success outcomes, such as early career earnings, graduation rates, retention. This also includes our contraceptive choice and access team, which focuses primarily on policies and measures impacting contraceptive affordability and access. It includes our infrastructure initiative, which covers a wide range of policy areas from housing, transportation, climate, and clean energy, and really looks at different state and federal policies in that realm. And then we also have our public finance team, which looks at really the umbrella of tax and benefits policies. And of course, as Justin mentioned, Arnold Ventures is very committed to criminal justice research. We have not forgotten about our criminal justice researchers out there, but our criminal justice initiative actually just recently launched its own RFP. So for any of those quasi-experimental studies or RCTs that are in the criminal justice realm, we ask that you actually submit those through the criminal justice initiatives RFP, which we'll drop in the chat. And just the final component here, in addition to that strong causal study design, the alignment with AV policy areas, the final for this building evidence RFP is those pathways to inform policy, which Justin really mentioned and touched on quite a bit of really is the research project policy relevant. And for us, we're not interested in funding research for research's sake. With these RFPs, we're really looking to fund research that can help inform and guide policymakers' decision making. And that could be things such as the allocation of resources at all levels of government, 
or really just ensuring that a study is evaluating a policy or program that has demonstrated relevance or buy-in from policymakers. This could look, this could entail the different policy levers to support the scaling of a program, such as upcoming regulatory changes, new funding streams, or again, that clear buy-in from anything from a public college or institution all the way up through to federal government agencies. And now switching now to thinking about our strengthening evidence RFP. This again is similar in that we have that key policy relevance piece and the really strong focus on study design and rigor. But unlike the building evidence RFP, this RFP we really focus solely on randomized controlled trials, which as some of you may know, that's really been the bread and butter, the bread and butter of our team. And we're excited to have that building evidence RFP expanding into QEDs, but we do maintain that focus on RCTs with the strengthening evidence RFP. And unlike the building evidence RFP, the strengthening evidence RFP is open to all social policy areas. So you do not have to align just with AV's policy areas within the strengthening evidence RFP. And with this RFP, we're really looking to support research that is evaluating established programs with the capacity to be delivered at scale. And so by established here, we really mean programs that have a history of being implemented under real world conditions and that have committed external funding. So we know that these randomized evaluations require a lot of time and work and effort from both researchers and the programs themselves. And so we want to be really cognizant of that and ensure that we're not layering on these really rigorous, challenging tests of programs when the program may not have really gotten its theory of change in place, may not have a really clear, um, coherent method for recruitment or retaining participants. We don't want to place that undue burden of evaluation on a program that may not think they're quite ready. So that's why for this RFP, you'll notice we do require some demonstration of the program's implementation feasibility and that it really is mature enough for this level of a rigorous evaluation. And that does go into the programmatic funding piece that you see on the slide here, where typically we provide funding for the evaluation, but not for programmatic purposes. And so now going into each RFP selection criteria in detail, Again, we have these three primary selection criteria and they are pretty much the same across the two RFPs. So both RFPs require that rigorous study design, that demonstrated implementation feasibility with slightly stronger criteria for that for the RCT RFP, the strengthening evidence RFP. And then we also request a really strong demonstration of policy relevance. And for the study design piece here, we're really looking for well-powered, rigorous studies that can provide a fair and valid test of a, specific, of a specific policy, program, or intervention. And so for QEDs in particular, for that building evidence RFP, we will look for a good bit of detail and rationale for your chosen approach. So for example, let's say you're using a difference in differences design to test a policy that was implemented in a staggered treatment style, so at different times in different states. We'd really love to see, in addition to your identification strategy and rationale for using a diff and diff, we'd also like to see your potential robustness checks to address that staggered treatment timing and how you'll address risks of bias and things like that. And another note on study design here is that we do have a strong preference for administrative data whenever possible. However, we do understand that for some research topics such as early childhood outcomes or mental health, uh, administrative data unfortunately isn't necessarily available. So when administrative data is not available, we do ask that you really make your data source clear in the application and that you really describe and outline your data collection process. I also want to note here that we are open to qualitative research and implementation research. However, we ask that those methods that are not that clear, rigorous, quantitative method, that the qualitative or implementation research methods be saved for your secondary or exploratory outcomes for your proposed projects. And then finally, for that program implementation piece here, for both RFPs, we are looking to evaluate programs that have been implemented and carried out under real world conditions. So as I mentioned, for the RCT RFP, we're really looking for programs that can demonstrate that they are mature enough, they're ready and can withstand the sort of arduous process of a randomized evaluation. For the building evidence RFP, we will still look for um, signs that the program can be implemented and has been implemented under real world conditions. And some ways to demonstrate that could be sharing some preliminary descriptive st statistics about the program's geographic reach, 
perhaps data on participation, how many people have participated over time, or maybe even some preliminary measures on a program's impact on the community. And again, what we're really just looking for here is, does the program, has it been successfully implemented? Have they worked out the kinks? Do they really um, have a strong recruitment and retainment strategy? And are they just really ready for this evaluation? And finally, we have that policy relevance piece. Again, as Justin said, this is really why we're so excited about these new RFPs is, and this opportunity to kind of help build out our knowledge base and understanding and bring in that clear policy piece as well. I do want to note that we are focusing exclusively on domestic policies here, so policies within the United States. And we're really excited, particularly about this role of policy relevance for the quasi-experimental RFP, where as you all likely know, and as we know, it is no secret that RCTs can take a very long time. And we're very excited to support this quasi-experimental research, which has a big advantage in that it can happen in a very quick pace, particularly if it's retrospective. And you can really answer these pressing policy questions in real time. So we're so excited to have this policy relevance piece kind of come to the front and center for these new RFPs, and we can't wait to see what you will bring forward. So putting all of that together, here's just a brief overview again of those key selection criteria that are pretty similar, if not the same, across the two RFPs, along with some of those differences, such as the QED focus for the building evidence RFP versus the RCT focus for the strengthening evidence RFP, the clear delineation in being limited to those policy areas for the building evidence RFP versus the strengthening evidence RFP, the RCT RFP, being open to all areas of social policy. And then another key difference between these two RFPs is the timeline. So for the building evidence RFP, again, that's the QED RFP for shorthand, um, we do ask for LOIs to come in the door by June 1st for this RFP. For the strengthening evidence RFP, we are accepting rolling submissions here, so you don't have as much of a time crunch there. And we are so, as Justin said, we're so excited and we really hope that we can see that influx of QEDs in particular by June. And for reference, as you're thinking about this timeline and submissions, historically within AV funded quasi-experimental studies have been in the range of $200,000 to $400,000 for the budget. For prospective QEDs, um, we do expect that to be toward the higher end of the budget and we understand the additional costs of those prospective studies. For the strengthening the evidence RFP, just for a frame of mind, for those previously funded AV RCTs, they've typically been in the range of 300 to 500,000. In addition to that selection criteria we've already discussed, we will be prioritizing a few key criteria within the LOIs. And so these priority areas include whether or not the proposed study includes policy relevant primary outcomes, and we define a policy relevant primary outcome as just an outcome that can really be demonstrated to be salient to policymakers. So these would include things such as educational achievement, measures of workforce earnings, hospitalizations, or government spending. Within that realm of policy relevant outcomes, we'll also really be prioritizing studies that can evaluate both short and long term outcomes whenever possible. So for long-term outcomes, we know that this can vary widely depending on the population, the data source, and even the policy being studied. But we really are just trying to encourage researchers to not only examine the immediate impact of a policy or program, but to really see if you can stretch and understand how those impacts could change over time within a population. And in that vein, we also are very open to replication studies as well and seeing how different programs impact things over time. And again, we have a strong preference for administrative data. And as I said, we are not exclusively requesting administrative data, but just given the ease of access, um, particularly for larger well-powered samples and the greater likelihood of using these validated standardized measures, um, we really believe administrative data eases this rigorous study um, and also eases our means of having transparent and replicable future research as well. So that's primarily why we really push for administrative data. And again, as I said, we, and as Justin said, we're really excited to be broadening the pool of researchers coming in the door and working with us. And we really want to encourage those who may be new to Arnold Ventures, who have may never received our funding before, may not have worked with us before. We really encourage you to bring your research ideas to us, bring your LOIs. Um, and this is especially true for those who are in historically underrepresented communities within the research community, such as researchers of color and women, along with early career researchers. And then finally, 
we do have a couple of priority areas for each RFP. And these are both thinking about sort of the research life cycle here. And so for the building evidence RFP for that QED RFP, we will prioritize studies that can provide and demonstrate that there may be a pathway to more rigorous future evaluations, whether that be a future RCT of that program or an additional quasi-experimental study. In that similar vein, for the strengthening evidence RFP, we will prioritize studies that can demonstrate that there is maybe prior evidence or prior evaluations that can really show this program can have an impact. So for example, say you're proposing an RCT of a program that in the past was found to have a positive impact on maybe a pretty small sample um, or a very limited geographically um, sample we would really love and be very compelled by this opportunity to really bolster that evaluation and better understand how that program or policy impacts folks at a larger scale. And with these priority areas, again, these criteria are not required. These are not our outlined three selection criteria, but this is hopefully just our way of trying to be transparent about when review about what our reviewers are looking for and what we'll prioritize as LOIs come in the door. Great. So hopefully if you're still with us, um, we can provide just a little bit of guidance on what to do if, once you're ready to apply. Again, we're so excited we're here. We're so excited to be sharing this with you. And this is hopefully just to help really ease the process, um, sort of open the window and help you see how we go through this um, and what the next steps are for you. And so both RFPs will follow this very similar process, just on slightly different timelines, where for both RFPs, we'll ask you to submit a three-page LOI. For that building evidence RFP, that is, again, the QED RFP, we do have a June 1 deadline for that LOI submission. And then for the strengthening evidence RFP, we will be accepting rolling submissions. These LOIs will be reviewed based on the criteria we outlined today. So that policy relevance piece, the program implementation feasibility, along with the rigorous study design, along with those priority areas we just discussed. And you'll be notified either way regarding an invitation to a full proposal. For the building evidence RFP, all applicants will be notified by July 15th whether or not a full proposal is invited. And for the strengthening evidence RFP, we expect reviews to be completed within four to six weeks of submission and you'll then be notified. For the timing from a full proposal submission to a final decision, that will likely vary depending on the complexity and the size of the proposed research project. So we don't really have a ballpark for that, but again, that will be on a case-by-case -case basis. And finally, for our application process, we have a really exciting new development here, which is that we have a new application portal. We are super excited about this new portal. Um, we're hoping that it will really make things much easier and more efficient on your end when applying for these RFPs. And this portal is actually in use for all of Arnold Ventures RFPs. So this includes our two open RFPs along with the Criminal Justice Initiatives RFP. And just to note, you will be required to create an account for the portal, but then you can use that account for any of these RFPs and for future submissions down the road. And if you have any trouble or questions navigating the portal, please just reach out to us. We're happy to help you with that. All right, so we've made it. And I really hope that you've gone away with just a better understanding of why we've released these RFPs, what we're looking for in your submissions, and why we are so excited to read your LOIs and get some exciting new research projects in the door. And so if you walk away with anything from our time together today, we really hope that it's, we're really looking forward to your great research ideas, um, but we're more so looking forward to waiting for our, our dramatic reveal. We're more so excited for your great rigorous research ideas, and we're most excited, again, for the dramatic reveal, for you to bring us your great rigorous policy relevant research ideas. So please, we love um, we love research. We're so excited to work with you all on this. And we're really excited to see how we can bridge this growing knowledge base of rigorous causal research and bring in that policy piece as well. And again, we really want to encourage those early career researchers or those who have not previously worked with us. Please um, reach out. Please bring us your LOIs. We are so excited to work with you and so excited to continue building this knowledge base and work together. And we've made it. So now we'd love to open the floor for questions. I know we've already received some. Um, and if you have any more burning questions as we go, we can drop those in the Q&A box below. I know I did see one question asking me to repeat those budget numbers. So I can just do that really quick, where our budget range for that um, QED RFP for the 
that is the building evidence RFP, we expect those to be in the range based on historic projects between about 200 to 400,000. And then for the RCT RFP, that's the strengthening evidence RFP, we expect those to be in the range of 300 to 500,000. Awesome. Thanks, Samantha. And I was sorry, sorry, I just want to uh, jump in on that very quickly as well. And just to add sort of more nuance to that, that that said, we've still, we've definitely supported studies that are beyond these figures. So the range obviously is pretty wide. Um, and though to say that the higher amounts do often get attention both from us and the board. So that's just something we're very mindful of as we take studies um, to the board. Um, and then just last thing on that, we also post summaries of our funded studies on the AV website, and these go into obviously what the study is about, but also details around the funding amount and the length of the study. I know there was a question on what is the duration of our typical studies as well, um, which is on average, I think about four years, uh, but you can find the details there. And then Leah just shared in the chat a link to those summaries. So thanks for letting me jump in. Okay, awesome. So um, I'm going to be posing the questions to our wonderful panelists, Trudica and Samantha. Um, just to kick us off, thanks so much to everyone who submitted questions during the registration process. If you did, you might have noticed that we tried to incorporate as many of the answers to those questions as we could within Samantha's presentation, uh, but there are a few that we didn't get to. So I'm going to go ahead and start with those, um, and then we'll jump into some of the things that we've seen come in through the Q&A. Please feel free to continue submitting questions through the Q&A as we're um, answering those things, and we'll get to as many of those as we can in the time that we have remaining. If we don't get to your question, uh, we have a record of the questions and who asked them, so we'll follow up with you in the next few days. Okay, the first question, um, Shrutika, do we fund government entities? Yeah, thanks, Leah, and thanks for asking that question. So I guess the general answer is that, yes, we can support government entities, though we would like to flag that it usually takes much longer to execute those grant agreements. And so we'll just say that to, to plan for that time and how long it takes to do that. Uh, and of course, if you have specific questions, as we've said, about the government entity that might seek funding or the, the details, uh, please reach out to us. Awesome, thanks, Jadika. Um, The next question, Samantha, um, I'll ask you to take this one. Um, and there were a couple of sort of related questions that I'm gonna uh, pull together into one. So one person asked, can we apply for RCT funding for a study of children assigned to programs through a centralized lottery system? And the related question that we got was, do you consider a randomized encouragement design to be an RCT? So basically, what are we thinking of when it comes to that strengthening evidence RFP for design? Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, we do consider lottery systems to be within that bucket of randomized evaluations here. Um, and I would say we'd also ran, uh, consider randomized encouragement to also fall into that bucket, really, as long as you have that rigorous randomization and can make the compelling case for randomized design, um, we'll definitely consider it within that strengthening evidence RFP. Awesome, thanks, Samantha. Um, I will follow up with another design question. Is propensity score matching something that AV might find? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, yes, as I said, while a preference is diff and diff, IV and um, regression discontinuity, we are open to other designs. Um, funding decisions will really depend, again, on the details of the research question, the primary outcomes being used, the rationale for that design, and really the overall level, level of rigor. So we encourage you to come forward with your creative, innovative designs. Um, but again, we really, those meat and potatoes, the diff and diff, the IV, and the regression discontinuity are um, our preferences, but we're open to other rigorous quasi-experimental designs. Awesome. Thanks, Samantha. Um, Shritika, I'll go to you for the next question. Do you anticipate another round anytime soon for quasi-experimental designs for early childhood education and family engagement policy and practice? Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks for that. For that. Oh, that's a really good question. So the current building our evidence RFP that Samantha talked about is focused just on the key policy area. So those include higher education, public finance, contraceptive choice and access and infrastructure. And that is likely to remain the focus in the newer, near future. Um, since childhood education and family engagement policy and practices are not an AV focused area right now, uh, we don't anticipate opening the RFP to those areas, um, the building evidence one. But having said that, 
Um, it is worth noting that the strengthening RFP, um, which is on focused on RCTs, is open to all policy areas. So if there, there is an RCT within the childhood education or family engagement space, then uh, we would love to see an LOI uh, for an RCT. Great, thanks, Radhika. Samantha, I'll come to you with the next question. Can a proposal include an RCT for building evidence or are you focused only on quasi-experimental approaches? So for example, if it requires funding for operational costs. Mm, thanks, Leah. Um, the building evidence RFP does focus solely on quasi-experimental designs, and but the strengthening evidence RFP is focused on RCTs. So that's where we would recommend um, really any of those stage RCTs that you send those LOIs to the strengthening evidence RFP. And again, we expect budgets for either design to include funding for operational costs of executing the study and the associated study costs. Um, and we do want to clarify that AV typically does not support costs for direct program implementation. Thanks, Samantha. And just to add on, there was someone who had separately asked a question. Um, although you don't fund the program, can the RFP fund a coordinator position to support coordination of the research and grant reporting? Yeah, I can take that. Um, yes, we we do. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So any costs that are associated with the research directly are things yes. that we could cover. Okay. Um, Shritika, I'll ask you the next question. What are the criteria AV is using to define administrative data? Is that in contrast to self-report or is there another piece we need to be aware of? Yeah, that's really good questions. I think when we refer to administrative data, um, we're thinking more of something that's collected on routine, um, either by the government or outside of it, um, in the sense of that data is being collected already and you will not have to take additional, say, undertake primary data collection or conduct surveys um, within the, the sort of grant uh, budget request. So I think that's how we differentiated that administrative data is data that already exists, which you can leverage for the study um, versus primary data collection or conducting surveys specifically for the purpose of your study. Awesome. Thanks, Trudica. Um, Samantha, I'll come to you with the next question. How many proposals do we anticipate funding and is there a total budget for our RFPs? Yeah, this is one of our exciting factors. That is to be determined. Um, we don't have a total budget for these RFPs and we're really just going to make these decisions on a case-by-case -case basis as LOIs come in the door. Awesome, thank you. Um, Samantha, I'll ask you the next question too. Do we have an ideal research window? Um, so can these RFPs support proposals conducting research over multiple years due to the length of projects in specific policy areas? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we generally love long-term follow-up. As I said, that is one of our priority areas is really ensuring that we're able to assess um, whether or not a program has not only an immediate impact, but also a long-term impact as well. Um, so yes, please, we encourage long-term follow-up. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, Shrutika, I'm going to come to you with a couple of questions related to our criminal justice RFP. Um, just to be clear, those of us on our team aren't the primary points of contact for that RFP. There are a couple of questions that have come in that we will go ahead and answer. Um, but we want to reiterate that if you are seeking funding for a study that seeks to measure criminal justice outcomes, um, I'll go ahead and reshare the link to the RFP, which has a little bit more details about what they're looking for and what their process is. Um, so... Sorry, just to go ahead uh, with the first question, is there a deadline for the criminal justice RFP? Yeah, so, yeah, so as, as I'm aware, it's an open RFP. RFP. Um, so no, no, there is no deadline for that application. Awesome. And um, to do, sorry, I'm skipping around a couple of questions. <laughs> So for clarification, should all criminal justice related proposals be submitted to the CJ RFP or can we also submit to the strengthening evidence RFP if that's applicable? Yeah, so in general, um, the way we structured it, any if you're evaluating any program or policy that's in the criminal justice space or the outcomes are related to criminal the criminal justice initiative, um, then typically those should go to the criminal justice RFP. Um, of course, if you do happen to send something through the strengthening R uh, RCT RFP, uh, we will pa be passing that on to the criminal justice team. Um, so they will take the lead on that. Awesome, thank you. 
Um, and again, just to clarify, within that RFP, you can find much more detail than we're able to speak to today. Um, so I'd really encourage you to go ahead and check that out. Um, if you're interested in a point of contact, I know someone asked that, then please feel free to shoot us an email and we can connect you with the appropriate person on their team. Okay, Samitha, I'm going to switch gears a little bit to ask you the next question. Are there certain or specific deliverables that you're interested in, such as a journal article? Mm, that is a great question. Um, for us, we really do encourage transparency in your research and really making that research available. So we don't have clear set defined deliverables that we expect of all of our grantees, um, but we will encourage publication um, upon completion of the study. And that's what most of our grantees do is some sort of publication, whether that be a peer reviewed article or a separate internal report or something of that nature. Um, but we don't have clear, defined, specific deliverables of expectation. We will, however, on our end, um, we do try to really encourage that transparency. So we do publish our own brief blurbs about the different um, studies that we fund, and that includes blurbs at the start of the study, describing um, what the study will evaluate, um, what are the anticipated primary outcomes, is the pre where is the pre-analysis plan located and pre-registered, and then we also include summaries of findings um, in layman's terms at the end of our funded studies as well. Thanks, Samantha. Um, Shridika, can you talk a little bit about research team sizes and any preferences for expertise or disciplines? That's a good question. Um, so I, I think like overall, no specific guidelines on these. Um, we would look to sort of uh, what you think is the most appropriate team size as well as expertise for the scope of the study that's being proposed. Um, again, obviously, the expertise depends on what the policy area is, what the study design is, um, what are some of the, the sort of qualifications of the research team, um, but we don't have sort of hard and fast rules around that. Thanks, Trudica. Um, okay, so I'll open this up to either of you who might want to take this question. How do we determine whether a program is sufficiently implemented and has shown real-world feasibility to be eligible for the Strengthening Evidence RFP? I'm happy to start on that. <laughs> yeah, so I think we'll really look to what the history of the implementation has looked like. So, for example, um, ha is that program still in the sort of design stage? Um, for example, are you still conducting um, sort of testing or efficacy studies to see if um, the program has been finalized or you're still changing program components? Um, the other thing we would look for is, you know, again, is this something that is, is a great idea on paper or has it been um, implemented in real world conditions, say a program has been implemented in one school district at least, or um, in a few counties across um, a city or a state. Um, so really evidence to suggest that there, you don't come across implementation failures, um, especially being able to anticipate what some of the challenges will be, um, because essentially uh, an evaluation will rest on that program being implemented relatively smoothly. We do understand there will always be challenges and there will always be take up issues, uh, but at least the sort of, um, but at least we can be confident that if the conditions are favorable, the program will run as expected at a sizable scale. Awesome. Thanks, Trudica. Um, someone asks, will you have a mechanism for welcoming feedback on the operations of the new portal or suggestions for improvement? I will take that question to say yes. I would love to hear feedback on the new portal um, as the person on our team who's led the development of it. So if anything is unclear, if y'all feel like you're struggling to uh, work the portal in any way, please feel free to reach out to our team and we'll provide that contact information um, at the end of the webinar. Um, an additional question. If a funded project encounters unforeseen changes that negatively affect costs, is it possible to apply for supplementary funds to complete the study at the optional quality level? Um, and Samantha, can you take that one? Yes, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, and yes, we do have mechanisms for that. And we really want to make sure we know a lot can happen, especially thinking back to 2020 and just there's a lot of uncontrollable things that can go on. And so we are um, very understanding and we try to really work with our funded research teams and our grantees to ensure we can maintain that quality that we agree upon at the start of the study. Thanks. Um, Samantha, can I come to you with a second funding question, um, which is, are there specific expenses that we're not allowed to request? Mm. 
I don't have specific expenses at the top of my head. We do have a clear indirect cost policy um, that depends on the type of institution that's applying for funding. And that is outlined, I believe, in the RFPs. Um, but beyond that, again, we just really look for expenses only within that evaluation support bucket and the research support bucket here, and then alliance with, again, that indirect cost policy. Yeah, and I just add to that, that um, typically we will come back to you and have an open discussion if there are components of the budget um, that we think are not allowable under our policies or don't really fit the scope of the project well. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry, while we do obviously do want the budgets to be sort of in line with the scope, um, we do um, we do sort of try to work together with, with the research team in coming to that final budget. Thanks so much, both of you. Um, the next question I'll post to Shrutika, can an organization submit to multiple RFPs in different focus areas at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, so LOIs will sort of be treated independently on both of these RFPs. So yes, absolutely. If you have more than one idea, please do, please do send it in. Okay, and I know we're coming up on time, so um, I apologize that you weren't able to get to all of your questions, but I'll just go ahead and ask one final one. Um, Samantha, is ownership of the data uh, through funded studies shared? Uh, ownership of the data would be shared if it's acceptable, if it's permissible. Um, I know that there are quite a few data sharing agreements and um, details to those processes. So we do encourage, again, transparency in research um, and really having that open science principles uh, followed through but that will probably be on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, thanks so much. Um, and I know we have just about a minute left on our time. So Samantha, I'll pass it back to you to go ahead and close us out. Great, thanks Leah. Um, and thank you again, Trudica, Leah, Justin. Um, we're again, we're so excited to have you all here. And as you can see on the screen, we have a nifty little QR code that will take you straight, straight to the RFPs. Um, and if you have any questions we didn't address, we have a, an FAQ up on our website that can provide some answers to additional questions that we were anticipating from applicants. And we also have our team's email on the slide here as well. And from Leah, you'll be receiving a follow-up email with that includes a link to this recording so you can watch us all again um, or share this with your friends and colleagues as you'd like. And again, we're so excited to hear back from you and we really hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and a great rest of your week. And we really look forward to seeing all of your ideas very soon.